Good morning, everybody. And uh, today we're doing our live with the partner of ours, the lender, David Gazarian from the IQ Mortgage, where we're talking about the latest of the mortgage trends, how to understand them, and what to expect from the summer, when the rates are going down, and what do we need to know, whether we're shopping, whether we're looking to sell the house, and how to approach today's real estate market. So first, let me talk about the inventory levels. We all know that we are coming in into the most uh, busiest season of the year of uh, real estate because all the kids are out of school and uh, uh, the most transactions are uh, in the year are going to happen with those within those six weeks of the summer break. Hi, David. How are you? Good morning, Alexandra. I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Thank you for joining us. So, David, we know that the next six weeks of summer are going to be the busiest one. At least this is how they historically uh used to be will be like for the last 13 years that i've been doing real estate they want the kids are out of school most people are looking to relocate and make all of the changes that they need to to, to make in their lives and could you tell us a little bit more about the mortgage rates so we've seen them go up we're seeing them slowly slowly uh, going down but could you talk a little bit on the fact that it's not quite the Fed that, like the Fed meeting that is uh, affecting the rates, but it yeah. it has more to do with the with the other factors. So it's it's the market really. Uh, it's not the Fed definitely. The Fed hasn't uh, lowered rates in years, so the Fed has nothing to do with it. But the Fed watches the economic factors. So does everyone else including the mortgage bankers so the the um <clears throat> unemployment uh came in the first time as far as i'm aware uh, lower than expected which means that they are getting those uh, to those higher unemployment numbers which is what the fed really wants higher unemployment means lower inflation so the fed is still fighting inflation he has to be very careful of what he says alexandra because people read in between lines but as of right now i know uh, rates were really high back in October, November. They started going down in December. In about the, I would say, about the last month or month and a half, they've been climbing up again. Um, so uh, I just read news that rates have dropped. I haven't priced anything, anyone today. I can't tell you if it's a significant drop. Mm -hmm. But uh, the past couple of days, I have been hearing that the rates were on the downslope. I really don't think it's it's a big significant thing to to like a drop to 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 be even mentioning about it. So rates at this moment are high. So we are in low sevens, correct? Right now, low and mid sevens for the well, rates. Well, it depends what loan you're talking about and which borrower. Obviously, you know yeah. how that goes. Uh, so yeah, so the government uh, government loans, VAs, FHA is going to be sixes. Commercials are going to be in sevens. Uh, it really depends uh, th uh, on the borrower, credit score, down payment, and uh, occupancy. All those factors. So it's it's hard for me to. Uh, uh, well uh, the rate. Yeah, we, we're never going to hold you, uh, hold you up to the rates. But um, so, David, if we're talking about like the Fed's meetings, they are uh, they're happening regularly, but they're happening within the gap. And then we have the inflation reports coming out. We have the uh, job reports coming out. And do the rates actually get affected and do the mortgage rates actually react to those reports absolutely they do they they do because they know that the fed looks at that so so absolutely so for example if the job reports comes out higher um meaning uh, unemployment is lower which was the case for the, the past several months the economy was strong 
and unemployment was actually lower than they expected that affected the rates negatively so uh yes they, they definitely those, those the cpi index does impact the rates as well so mm -hmm. yeah so that's why for all of our viewers if you guys are looking for you know like looking to see what is going to affect the rate just just follow those reports if you don't want to if you if you don't want to dig deep into it you can just uh call david or myself and uh he <laughs> see where we are you know like where we are with the rates and what is going on so david but despite the fact that the rates have been um increase incredibly high lately uh you guys are still processing loans we're still selling the uh property so can you tell me what do you see as the motivation for the people who are currently buying despite of those so crazy high rates i think people are slowly getting used to the rates alexandra uh back in 2005 when i started the rates were uh, about six and a half i would say your your mid rate would be in the sixes um uh, so the i think the COVID rates of twos and threes are still too fresh in people's minds a lot of people still hold mortgages uh, a lot of people hold mortgages with the interest rates in the twos and the threes so people are sort of hopeful it's too fresh in their minds but I think slowly they're got coming to a conclusion that rates are here to stay. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that's. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was getting a call. So unfortunately, I used to keep talking. Oh, rates will drop in uh, because we were looking at the tendency of the mm -hmm. CPI index right. dropping. I'm like, oh, my God, we have less than a point to go will be there in three, four months and, and the Fed will start cutting rates. Guess what? Uh, the uh, the uh, <clears throat> rates, uh, the, the CPA ticked up the past couple of months, which uh, made the Fed more cautious in what he says. And now, I keep, and, and I had one question, Alexandra, we're, we're fighting inflation with high rates, right? which means if we drop rates inflation goes up again then how do we plan on dropping rates without inflation going up i don't know i'm not an economist but i keep hearing now uh, more and more frequently from people that are smarter than me that uh, once you drop drop rates the inflation will go up again so i have a feeling the fed has no plans of dropping rates for the next several years um, I think these high rates are here to stay for, I don't know, three to five years, God knows how long, um, which means, which means I, you shouldn't really chase the low rates. Um, um, just like, it's like a day trader, you know, uh, they tell you not to, not to chase that daily rate of a stock or whatnot, like look in the, look at the long term, like Warren Buffett says, look at the long term. It doesn't matter what the rate is today. I mean, it, it's up, it's down. One of these years, you will refinance, you'll get a good rate. But in my opinion, the sooner someone buys a house, the, the less they'll pay for it. The fact, not the fact, but probability says that the rates of prices are going to go up on housing. So I think people are slowly realizing that pricing is going up on housing and they're going to have to uh, they better enter the market and uh, uh, buy something regardless of what the rates are. And that's who I side with. That's what I would and, do. And uh, I agree that the high interest rates, they affected the market uh, tremendously. We had uh, we had the slowdown on the mar of the market. Obviously, the properties stay on the market longer. It takes more effort uh, from each seller, from each agent to sell the house. <clears throat> And I will tell you that uh, based on the based on our reports, the real estate reports that our um, the lowest prices for the houses that we hit and the most uh, uh, the most influence that the interest rates had on the housing market was uh, uh, October of last year. And if you guys look at the correlation between the housing prices and the interest rates, you would know that in October of 2023, the rates went up to seven and, oh, I'm sorry, eight and a half, closer to 9%. So that caused the, uh, the housing prices to go down. However, 
However, I can tell you right now that we've been doing a lot of equity reports for our past clients. And anybody, anybody who got their homes before the, uh, uh, before uh, like June of 2023, they all already got equity and they all got equity because the housing prices actually keep on going up. So if you are waiting, you know, like if you're waiting for the interest rates to go down and, uh, you know, like hoping that once they go down, you're going to jump on this, uh, you know, like you're going to jump on this wagon and uh, you're going to uh, get a house, it n might not be that straightforward and that easy as you think about it. Because right now, uh, we see a lot of opportunity to negotiate, to negotiate with the sellers. And David, I'm sure that you still see it in the contracts that every contract we bring to you, we are trying to get uh, some kind of seller contribution. The, uh, the money from the seller, it's either the uh, price cut, it's either the renegotiation based on the appraisal value, or it is the uh, it is the seller contribution towards the buyer's closing. I'm going and... <clears throat> to give you a <clears throat> excuse me, very public secret, Alexandra. That's, uh, that doesn't reflect the market, it reflects you. Um, it's, in my opinion, very realtor, realtor specific. Um, not every realtor is getting uh, uh, contributions. It's just you are. So you Thank shouldn't you. think that it's the it's the market. It's just you were a bit too uh, successful with uh, getting money. I don't know. So that's that's what I'm seeing. If you're asking my opinion from, from well, what the contracts come in. Thank you. I'll take it as a compliment, but I would say that in today's it's a market, shock, to be honest with you, because I'm looking at the files in front of me on the, on the screen here. Um, yeah. Thank you, but I would say that, and I would encourage all of the all of the potential buyers or all of the people who are on the edge right now to actually consider and have a conversation with the lender. Why? because I was looking at the historic uh, interest, mortgage interest rate. And the last time, guys, when we had the high inflation and uh, uh, the Fed was stalling the economy by high rates, it was the period of uh, 1970 through 1980. And that said, I can tell you guys that last time the Fed increased the rate, it lasted for 10 years. And if you take this, this information into consideration, and by the way, Fed takes it into the consideration as well. So there are two things over here to, uh, to think about. First of all, first of all, uh, last time it lasted 10 years, but we would hope that, uh, you know, Fed learned their lesson. And we've seen the Fed learn their lesson in, during the pandemic when they didn't allow the uh, they didn't allow the wave of foreclosures because of the unemployment. However, you know, like it's not like they figured out the best way, correct, out of the economic stall. So uh, we can only hope that this time our stall of the economy is not going to it's not going to last more like 10 years as it used to but at the same time we can tell you that you know like uh, if you like if you're waiting for those rates to go down to buy the house by the time they go down you might be paying you know like first of all it might not happen drastically this year how uh, how we were expecting it because we had the predictions of the rates going down in May this year, and they were slightly down, but then they went right back up, you know, and the and the decrease that we were hoping for never happened. That's number one. Number two, like right now, everybody is predicting that, uh, not everybody, but there is a 67% chance that the Fed is going to lower the rate during their September meeting. But guess what? It might happen, it might not, because we are a long ways uh, away from September. 
So we don't know. And uh, if you are in need and you can afford, and the main, I think that the main thing right now would be your affordability. Because if you can't afford that house with seven and a half percent interest or like six seventy five percent interest, then it might be it might be an option for you to shop for it right now because four years from now this house might not be in your price range period because we know our our income does not increase in the same uh, in the same por proportion as the housing prices. So, uh, David, how do you how do you see people overcoming the um, the issue of affordability in today's uh, in today's uh, like in today's housing market? Alexander, there is no red pill. It's just expensive. So a lot of people just buy what they can instead of what they want. And that's, um, unfortunately, that's my advice a lot of times when they ask David, what should I do? It's my advice, doesn't matter, because we do loans in many states. And I talked, I spoke with a guy in Los Angeles um, a couple of days ago, and he, he, he wants this $2.2 .2 million house. He's like, David, it's hard. I'm not making as much money on my taxes. How do I buy this house? I'm like, don't, don't buy this house. As long as you, nobody said that you have to live in the house that you own. As long as you own something that appreciates and you're participating in the appreciation of this market, you don't necessarily have to live in the house of your dream. You own the house of your dreams. So I said, listen, how much house can you afford? He's like a million tops. I'm like, okay, let's get you three investments in Vegas. How about that? And go rent the house of your dreams and wherever you are in Los Angeles and be happy for the school district and everything and own something in Vegas because it's appreciating. So you don't necessarily. So that's the kind of conversations. Um, it's just I tell people that's what I would do uh, instead of uh, the alternative being I can't afford the house that I want to live in. I'm not going to buy. I'm just going to wait for the rates to drop. I'm like, buy something, own something. Prices are going up, participate in it. Don't get left out of the market. That's my advice. And thank you so much uh, for mentioning it, David, because I think it is very important for everyone to hear that uh, right now in the time of a tough economy, and I think that there is no one who would deny that the economic situation in the country is pretty tough at the moment. So guys, we all make some sacrifices. And uh, this, um, this statement that David just made, I would encourage you all to take it really, really seriously. And that statement is, that if the real estate is appreciating, it is appreciating whether we want it or not, it is appreciating regardless of the interest rates. You remember the last year, the, uh, all, the, all the big uh, companies, they were predicting for the real estate prices to drop up to 6%. And what happened? It happened so that in majority of states, we ended up with the positive appreciation for the, uh, for the real estate, regardless of the historically high interest rate. Alexandra, um, I want to tell you something. Uh, sorry for interrupting you. I'm looking yeah. at something, and this is a cell phone format, so I can't share my screen. Um, I'm tempted to show you my, the, the, turn the camera on and show you. So I'm looking at a chart. The chart is called one year change in active housing inventory between April 2023 and April 2024. So active housing, how much how many homes do we have on the market? OK, this is a very important number, Alexandra, because um, the number of homes proportionate to the number of buyers will tell you if the houses are going to go up and down. If you have right. 5000 buyers, but 40,000 homes on the market, prices are dropping. If you have 5,000 buyers on the market and 6,000 homes, prices are skyrocketing, right? You don't have enough inventory. Here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the, the state's map. There's a percentage on everything. Florida is up 
which is the highest. Uh, Arizona you mean in inventory? inventory for the last year. Arizona is the second highest, 45%. Um, all the states are up. Washington's up 38%. Uh, Texas is up 38%. All the states are up except New York minus 1%. Guess who the coolest state is in Las Vegas? And I'm not very happy about this, but Nevada is negative 12%. So compared to the April of 2023 and April of 2024, we have the biggest drop in housing inventory compared to other states. So when we talk about prices are going to go up because inventory is dropping, according to this uh, uh, chart that I'm seeing, um, and this is some sort of a uh, something that I get every month that the mortgage news, mortgage nuggets, it's called. Uh, it basically means, Alexandra, that when we say prices are going to go up, it doesn't mean across the country. You should not, you shouldn't generalize this to the economy, the Fed, and everything. Go, go local. We're talking uh, Las Vegas. You're a you're a realtor. You're not selling in San Francisco or or Miami. Uh, it would be a different kind of conversation in Miami when they're up sixty four percent in inventory. So they're um, appreciation is going to plateau, or Arizona's appreciation, Texas, 38%. Uh, where are you? So everything's up. California's up 28%. Do, two states that are, again, minus, minus 1% New York, minus 12% Nevada. Nevada is a very different beast for that regard. Absolutely. So, and I will tell you that um, it inevitably happens every time we're experiencing the increase in uh, um, in um, in the um, in the prices, and I mean like in the prices across the board. So when the inflation is high, the uh, the uh, the amounts that we spend on our overall living they they increase. So what happens is that our states that don't have the uh, state income taxes, they actually gain population. This is what ha happens. And that's num number one. Number two is we're going to, we're going to see, you know, like we're going to see more demand for the housing. And uh, uh, if, if we talk about the inventory, and I agree with David that, uh, Real estate is a hyper-local thing, so you need to walk into the city, into the uh, into the community, you know, like into the side of the city where you're potentially shopping to actually understand the situation fully and understand what is the right uh, price and what is the right strategy for the purchase or the sale of the property. But if I look at our inventory, uh, for the past seven days. So we're talking, let's say, Friday to Friday. We had 982 new residential listings going onto the market. That's crazy. So within the last, yes. But guess how many ha we had under the contract? So under the contract, we had 883 listings to go under the contract. So we're talking about the absorption rate. So we only have, like if you, if you deduct the one number from another, we'll have 99 properties left on the market. So it is, it is a little bit better than it was in April and May, because honestly, we had to deal with the, uh, like in uh, the end of March, beginning of April, in a lot of cases, we dealt with the multiple offer situations just because of this particular problem, the lack of inventory on market. Right now, it's a little bit better, but um, what I can uh, see and what I can attest to as the realtor who's got the properties uh, listed for sale and we have the electronic log boxes on those properties, the moment the news comes that the Literally, the rate dropped like one, you know, like five, five of a hundreds of a percent, like went from 7.25 to 7.2. I can see immediately my log boxes going 
you know, like ding, 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 ding means that the people are activating. So people extreme are extremely sensitive to the rates right now. And they are like, guys, and one of the things that uh, I would suggest that you do is that you get pre-approved. And if you are trying to to catch this moment or to catch this property, and like David said, you know, like in these economic conditions, your perfect home and the home that you should buy might be not the same thing. And a lot of times, especially for those of you who are looking to buy your first, uh, you know, like your first home ever, you're making your first step into the home ownership. Guys, please remember that between your very first house and your dream home, there could be two, three, or maybe even four homes in between. And no, I'm not crazy and I'm not, I'm not saying it because it is part of my business to buy and sell. I'm saying it, it because it is way more, uh, it is way easier for you guys to use your first property as so-called piggy bank and, uh, and buy it, maybe, it, it, not maybe, it most likely going to be smaller than you want. It most likely going to be older than you want, maybe not in the premium area. However, spending two years on that property will actually generate you a, a tax-free profit on that house, and it will help you save the money. And the reason it helps you to save the money, like, you know, you, you might say, oh, you know, like rents are way cheaper. Rents are way cheaper, I agree. But what are you doing with this excess of money that you're supposedly saving? Are you truly saving it or you're going and spending it on something else that is completely perishable? Are you just going and having an extra meal in the restaurant instead of, uh, you know, like instead of buying the mortgage and making sure that your property appreciates regardless of the interest rates, regardless of the uh, inflation rate. So please, guys, look into look into buying, like David said, into buying something that might be smaller, that might be less desirable, but at least you're going to capitalize on that appreciation of the property. And when the time comes, and yes, you know, like if the interest rates go down, your value is going to go up and you will be able to trade that property for something nicer. And once again, it might or might not be the uh, the bigger home, but you will experience the savings. So if I may add, um, Alexandra, in <clears throat> thousands of home buyer's perspective that I've met over the last God knows how many years, doesn't matter. Um, most people, when they try to get qualified, um, they have, they want to, they always go for house number three for some reason. Um, very rarely you'll have someone to go and be like, David, this is the kind of house. I'm like, like, okay, this is the house that you should, it's obviously not up to me, the decision, but there is this organic growth of housing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in my house number nine, for example, but I've been doing this a while. So you, you buy what you can without stressing you, what you are, you can afford. It's not going to be in a neighborhood or whatever that you, uh, you, you like, right. You don't want it, rent it out, go, go, Go for the next one, yeah. Go, 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 go rent, but own something. But my, what I'm saying is, in, in two, three years, once it appreciates, then you've got this organic growth. You can take money out, refinance. Don't, don't forget that rent is going up again, which means you'll be able to rent it and go buy another home. Hopefully, your income is somewhat going up again. So organic graduation into better homes. When, when I tell someone, go buy a $200,000 condo or $350,000 townhome when they're looking for a five, $600,000 house. That doesn't mean for some reason, uh, the thinking goes, oh my God, I'm going to live here for the rest of my life. No, you're not. You're going to live there for the next two, three years. You're going to graduate from 350 to hopefully 420. 
That's still not the house that you want. You'll live there for several uh, years, especially if your kids are young and the school district doesn't really matter to you. Okay, live there for two, three years, and then all of a sudden you've got two houses that are going up, and also the rent in those neighborhoods is going up. You see, um, you it's it's about these conversations that, that we have, and and the thinking changes instead of giving up. I cannot buy the six hundred thousand dollar house. I'm just not going to buy anything because I'm I'm offended at the housing market. Well, you're the, the housing market doesn't lose anything. So you you want to find ways of owning something and participating in the appreciation of this. It's 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 a wealth creation. It's the biggest. Um, you could call it many ways. It's the biggest hedge against inflation, in my opinion. There's nothing that insures you against inflation than a fixed mortgage. So. I agree with you. And for those of you guys who are still waiting for the housing crash, if there if there's any of those people left, you know, like you're more than welcome. I'm not trying to to persuade anybody. Otherwise, um, I have clients who are waiting for the housing crash since 2013 that they've been telling themselves to you know to wait until it <laughs> until the real estate market goes down, but Anyways, um, for those of you guys who are interested, what you know, like what the big companies are doing and the big boys are doing, I can tell you that uh, one of the biggest players on the real estate market right now is the company called BlackRock, and that is the company that um, publicly traded company, by the way, and they go in into the uh, big metropolitan areas and they go into the suburbs and they buy out like huge communities. They were the ones who who bought a ton of homes from the new home builders and they were literally buying the streets. They were buying like um, 10, 20, 50 homes at a time. And the reason they did it is because they know exactly what is going to happen. They know that the housing prices are going to appreciate and they're renting those homes uh, they're renting those homes out and right now they're coming up with the uh, with the new programs that are called like uh, rent to buy programs that are uh, that are pretty much brutal on their terms for the buyers but this is like this is what the companies are doing they are uh, they're betting a lot of money on this market to be, you know, like to be going up and mm -hmm. on the rentals to be popular because, uh, and on the rentals to to gain popularity because of the, uh, because of the prices and the lack of affordability. So guys, please do not be shy to reach out to me, to reach out to David and get your absolutely free consultation. Like if you don't know, what to do if you have a dream or you you know like you want to be a homeowner it might not be happening today but if you want to start your path on the way to home ownership we're here please use us as a resource use us as your trusted advisor so we could help you uh, see this way and see all this step by step um, things that you need to do in order to reach your you know like to reach your first time home ownership and how to you know like how to go further and further and the only thing that i can tell you is like the sooner you start the sooner you're going to see the results absolutely uh, and and there is a there is a way like we cannot change the economic situation. We cannot change the market. It doesn't matter how mad David and I are gonna get at the rates and how mad we can get uh, at the housing prices. But like there is nothing we can do about it. The only thing that we can do is to educate you guys, educate our listeners, educate our clients on how to take advantage and how to make it work for you right now with the so-called cards that we're dealt. And we don't control the interest rate, we don't control the prices, 
but there are things that we can negotiate for you and there are choices that we can propose to you so you could make an educated decision whether right now is the moment to tap in into the home ownership or maybe it is not. And I know for sure that, you know, it, it doesn't happen this way that everybody who comes into David's office or gets on a Zoom call with him ends up buying the house. So for some people, it's it's a six months trip. You know, for some people, it is uh, it is a year. We had a client who's been getting ready for to become a homeowner for a year and a half, and it's um, it's a separate journey for every single for every single one of you. But it is important to have the support. The informational support it is important to understand what you need to do and how to tap in and uh, I think that last thing that I would add to today's live is that there are there are opportunities in each market and if I were to name the top opportunities right now in today's market it is the a the opportunity to negotiate with the seller you know, I still do believe that it exists and it exists in a good amount of uh, cases. B, it is the opportunity to buy the property with the lowest down payment because we all know what happens when the interest rates go down and we have the flood of buyers on the market. Those buyers that have zero um zero percent down like VA loans, the three and a half percent, the five percenters, they get priced out of the market. Sellers just stop looking at them when we turn into the buyer's market. Like this is what happens. So if you're looking to tap in into the home ownership with the lowest down payment, this is your time to do it. You don't wait for the interest rates to go down. You're not going to, you're not going to, like, you're not going to see the successful um, execution of your dream if you wait for the interest rates to go down and you're hoping to get the house with three and a half percent down. It's just not happening in those conditions. David, what are the most, uh, like, what are the most applications that you see right now going with as far as the down payments? That's good question let's take a look you mean the down payment amount yes yes all right are people um, um i do see quite a bit of people selling houses putting bigger down payments these are the people that have owned homes in a while, uh, for, for a while, so they've accumulated uh, equity. That's the privilege of buying a home as soon as possible. So I do see either a very big 40, 50% down payment, so the mortgage becomes irrelevant. I um, mean, mm -hmm. people are still buying five, six hundred thousand dollar houses. Only they're upgrading, which means they're selling the other house and they're putting four hundred thousand dollars borrowing too. It really is irrelevant what the rate is on a two hundred thousand dollar loan. Um, so, yes, uh, I can't give you one percentage. There's still the people that are barely coming up with the three to five percent down payment. Um, I do see quite a bit of 20 percent down payments. And there's also the population that I, I, I would tell you that more so people are to kind of combat these, these higher rates. They're selling homes and putting big down payments and getting small mortgages. That's um, I see more of that now than, than in the past. Um, this is uh, this is like the main thought of today. I would say that when you have the house, you can exchange it for the bigger one. And this is exactly what David and I just talked about 10 minutes ago. If you have a home, you gain the appreciation with the market, whether you live in this house or you rented it out, or if this house even in another state, and guys, please do not underestimate the fact that we have tons and tons of people. I have quite a few buyers who live in California and on East Coast, like in New York and Boston, yeah. and who are buying here because they are renting back at home because they can't afford anything. And they're coming over here 
with $300,000 and they are actually buying the property free and clear. Free and clear and they're capitalizing on the appreciation and they're uh, they're gathering the uh, they're gathering the uh, rent. So instead of sitting in California and hoping that you know like 300,000 most of the time is not even the, uh, you know, like it's not even 10%, you know, like for for some of the homes. And even like even if it is 10%, then people still don't have the qualified income to own because their taxes are higher, their insurance are way higher. So instead of instead of trying to save up the money, just uh, consider buying in other states that are more affordable so that in a few years you can sell it and uh, or exchange that house for something nicer something bigger that you might eventually move into we do those transactions like i said there's uh, there are multiple ways there are multiple avenues it just we never have enough time and we never have enough opportunities to talk about all of them but we're happily sitting down with uh, all of our clients anytime you guys need so that we could we could draw the uh, the individual and the perfect roadmap for you and our consultations are free so you know you can uh, you can join us at any time i will be posting my information and david's contact information um at the uh, in the description to the video so you guys can always always um, check out our credentials please do check our reviews we're proud of our reviews and we know that we get a lot of clients who read our reviews and they're these are these are our real clients you know like this talking about the experience so check our reviews pick up that phone call us and let us know what we can what we can do for you and how we can help you even in this market I, I, I'll leave you with this, Alexander. I think for someone that's barely qualifying, for someone that thinks rates are high and payments are anyway, so that, that'd be most most middle class America. Uh, I think waiting for rates to drop, hoping that's going to be something good. I think when rates drop, that's going to be the worst that happens to them, because we'll see an immediate increase in prices in housing market. Uh, we also I. I keep thinking about this phenomenon, Alexander. Most people don't mention this, that since 2022, July of 2022, when rates started going up, most people haven't bought. Most people that wanted to buy into 22, 23, 24, most people are still on the sidelines. This means that those people will hit the market. Um, this market has low inventory. They will hit the market when rates drop. So for the person that's waiting, to for the low rates the worst thing that can happen to them is what they're waiting for low rates because uh prices will go up and i remember realtors wouldn't even talk to people with minimum down payment in 2021 it's just there was no hope of getting a contract accepted so 100 percent. and david we were not talking to those people i want to sound like a jerk you know like it's not a it's not the it's I'm not sure you <laughs> it's not the case where we wouldn't talk to people. It's more of the case where we couldn't help them. Um, we couldn't where? help yeah. them because we couldn't we couldn't sustain a proper competition. And uh, you know, like I will never ever put my buyer into the contract or advise my buyer to buy something if it goes out of their comfort range or their range of affordability. Where you guys were not stretching for the house, but I want to, you know, like I want to uh, add on to what just David said, is that when the when the interest rates went down during the pandemic, the people who won the most were the homeowners.
Oh, yeah. Because once you own your property at the time of a lower interest rate, there is no competition behind you. You just go and refinance. Now, David, if you can go back in memory, like I don't need the uh, exact numbers from you, but let's say if you go back to the uh, pandemic years, what was the percentage of you doing the loans? Like how many of them were refinances and how many of them were I would say seven, eight out of 10 people were refinancing. And that is something that I want everybody to hear that once that property, you know, like once, once you own that property and the interest rates go down, you can take advantage of it. If you're waiting to buy that property at the time of the lower interest rates, yeah. you don't know what happens you don't know what happens you might win you might get lucky but based on the pandemic experience of it three and a half percent down VAs five percent down conventionals they all were left behind the yeah. sellers okay. were accepting 20 plus percent down they were accepting the waivers of the appraisals and the guarantees of the prices and that means Up that to 10 every time, on top of this price yeah correct but every time this happens in the neighborhood when i accept the when i accept multiple offers with the guarantee of the price guess what happens i set a new price record in the You're neighborhood increasing the value the neighbors yes. will thank you, but other homeowners are not going to thank you. You're increasing the value of real estate in that neighborhood. I overpaid on a three hundred seventy thousand dollar house. I overpaid thirty seven thousand once. I paid. I I literally increased ten percent with that one purchase. I gave the neighborhood a ten percent price increase, which is horrible. But I wanted the house. I was the sixteenth offer. Um, these things are going to happen and if and if you're waiting for rates to drop i mean uh, i don't know i would say if you are waiting for the uh, best conditions to take advantage of the market it's time for you guys to give us a call because i we can break down the conditions for you and the correlations and what is well you know like what is happening right now what happened before and what is uh, you know like what we can fairly expect to happen and this way you know like we're not forcing anybody to buy or sell we're just giving you the information so you're educated so you are understanding what is going on with the market and instead of uh instead of forming and shaping your opinion because of uh, some couch expert on a TikTok who you know like who once said, today says one thing and tomorrow says the other thing you actually know where we're coming from the data that we are basing our opinions on and uh, you could decide for yourself but at least have an educated opinion about the market and about the opportunities that there are and uh, things might not look exactly the same as you imagine them right now to you good talk alexandra i appreciate it thank you david thank you so much we appreciate you and your team and thank you for being so diligent and so helpful to all of our clients thank you for guiding them through this uh not that easy of a process and it's guys it's a very complicated process but honestly when you work with us as a team you actually you actually feel like it wasn't a big deal until you know the difference <laughs> yeah, you gotta have something to know. compare to you gotta have something to compare it to but, all right well have a great weekend thank you let Thank us know so if we much. need to qualify anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I know I know one thing for sure. Whether I call you Saturday or Sunday, you're going to oh, man, take sorry. care of my right. clients. And yeah. thank you for that. Thank you for doing it for many years in a row. We appreciate you and you have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Alexandra. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.